My name is Brad Ullman and I am a choir director here at Westminster. I work with younger children's choirs and I am gay. My name is Daniel and I'm a pastor at Grace Trinity Community Church in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's a sister congregation of Westminster Presbyterian and I'm gay. My name is Isabel Hart Anderson and I'm a receptionist at Westminster Presbyterian Church and I am queer. I'm Rodney Allen Schwartz. I'm the director of the gallery and the archive at Westminster Presbyterian Church, and I'm gay. I'm Margaret McRae. I'm the director of the Westminster Counseling Center at Westminster Presbyterian Church. I'm a Presbyterian clergywoman, um, and, uh, and I'm a lesbian. I'm Timothy Rose, and I'm director of communications at Westminster Presbyterian Church in Minneapolis, and I'm gay. My name is John Greenwald, and I am a parishioner and a member of the Westminster Adult Choir, and I am gay. My name is Tim Hart Anderson. I'm the senior minister at Westminster Presbyterian Church in downtown Minneapolis, and I'm an ally. I grew up in a church and as part of a family where I always felt loved and supported. And I think because of that, um, I always knew that things would be okay. Um, it makes me really sad when I hear about people who are coming out only to be met with you know, hostility or anger or you know, a push out the front door. I grew up in a different faith tradition and it was a very difficult time because they were pretty vehemently anti-gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender. My family and my worship tradition were very conservative and I knew from fourth grade that I didn't really belong there. I was raised as a person of faith, but probably not fitting in terribly well and not necessarily buying the message that I was given, which was a very conservative and um, straight focused message. Growing up in the church for me was actually a good experience. I know lots of people have really negative experiences with church and growing up um, in conservative churches, but I'm really lucky that I haven't had that problem. So my personal journey as an openly gay Christian man, I came out when I was 18, and I remember right away, because I was quite active in my um, parents' church, I uh, went and talked to the pastor about it, and I just kind of wrote up my thoughts, and I was very curious and started doing some research on the scripture and everything. And uh, this was 1993 in a small town, and uh, I feel really fortunate that he you know, he had his own questions, but he really heard me out. I was married for 21 years, um, pretty happily, I thought. Um, and I, I guess I, I grew up in a small town in Kansas. I don't think I knew anything about homosexuality or certainly not the words gay or lesbian or queer or any of that. After about 19 or 20 years of marriage, I uh, actually it was probably before then, I began to realize that I was probably not a heterosexual, that it was very likely that I was a, a lesbian. And it was a very um, difficult thing, um, which was difficult for my marriage and difficult for me personally. But I reached a point where I felt I just could not go on and um, be married um, for the next, the rest, the, rest of the, the rest of my life, probably half of my life yet, even though I loved my husband and my two children. I also knew in the course of my, as I was raising my children, I was pretty certain that my youngest child was gay. Um, but we never talked about that and um, he never brought it up and I didn't push that with him. But he did tell me after he started college that that was the case. But I came to find that in being open to that and recognizing my own um, sexuality, um, how much that really deepened and um, made my life more authentic. Coming of age in the 80s, in the early part of the AIDS crisis, um, was quite challenging for me. What made the difference for me was coming here to Minneapolis and really um, spreading my wings. And I actually met my first openly gay man here at Westminster. 
There was a period for 10 years after I graduated from high school and moved to Minneapolis where I did not go to church. I really didn't feel welcome and I didn't feel like I fit in. I came to Westminster sort of out of accident. We had uh, family visiting and I needed to pretend that I went to church. And so a good friend of mine who is a Westminster member invited me and our family to join that particular Sunday. And I was quite surprised. Um, very open and wonderful service, current events. And I felt very early, instantly, that I was able to come out and be myself at Westminster. Uh, we have um, people whose life experience can be very helpful uh, in sharing in kind of a mentoring way that it does get better and that the churches that are in this community and elsewhere are not all like that. And certainly Westminster is not a church that would want to exclude anyone because of their sexual orientation. Well, when I came out, um, I was a sophomore in high school, and I had known for a little while that I was not, I didn't really care about gender. It was just, if I like this person, that's who I like. And I knew in my brain that my parents would be okay with it because that's what they had said their whole life long. That's what my dad especially had been fighting for within the church. But um, actually telling them, I was like so scared. I think that it was a little bit awkward at first, but then it just sort of was fine <laughs> after a little while. As a therapist, I'm a pastoral counselor, um, so I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and as well as a clergy person. And I see a number of people who are gay and lesbian or who are uncertain or who are wondering about the, their um, sexuality. And um, I find it a privilege to be able to help people look at that honestly and uh, find their way through that maze. Well, I have had opportunity to have those sorts of conversations with young people, either teenagers or in some instances in their early 20s, people who are at the end of their line who felt unloved by their families especially and also by the community, uh, sometimes their schools or places where they work. I've had those conversations and I always begin by saying to them that you may have received um, a negative um, reception elsewhere in the, in the church I serve and in the life I lead and in the love I offer here as a pastor, you will uh, be loved as much as anyone else because in you, in your life, uh, God is present and you, you bear the image of God in your life. To be the first openly gay uh, person ordained as a, as a pastor in Twin Cities Presbytery, I mean, is, I guess it's an honor in a way, although, you know, I also know that there are others who have gone before me who, who were ordained but not open. In a way, it's just a sign, another sort of step in the journey, a sign of progress that, that the church is changing, that we're becoming more inclusive, we're welcoming more people. And that's essentially what the gospel is all about. Um, it's sharing God's love with the world. And when we can be more loving to our gay and lesbian sisters and brothers and welcome them, embrace them as, as children of God, then it's just a sign that, you know, that, that God is at work in this place. I have a, one friend from high school who was one of the most popular girls, and I was blown away when she told me how high school was hell for her. And I just assumed that all those kids had wonderful high school experiences. And um, so it's just a really tough time. It's a really tough time for everyone, and people may not admit it, and some people may show up more than for others. And just know that your best years are ahead of you. Once you get past that bad time where you still feel so negative, you'll you know start to make new friends find a new place where you belong find one person that you know that you can trust with your struggle it really does get better my advice to young people who are thinking about coming out would be um, you know do it in your own time and in your own way when i think about my life and the fact that in my lifetime, we lost an entire generation of gay men to AIDS. And I think about what they would say to you. And I think, actually I know what they would say to you is be true to yourself, stay strong, and keep moving forward. You are made by the Creator. You're a child of the universe and you have a right to be here.
and you have a right to be yourself and love whomever you choose. We are all authentically who we were created to be, however that had happened. And there's no way that any of us is created in a way that is wrong or bad. I think that we can make bad decisions and do things that are wrong. But our innate self, our own, our, who we are as a, as a created soul and um, being is, is authentic in, in whatever way that comes out. As a continually, continually evolving person of faith, I absolutely unequivocally believe that LGBTQ individuals of all ages are absolutely made in the image of God. I hope that there comes a time when all kids, regardless of who they are or what they're struggling with, with their sexuality, will, will come out or come through the process knowing that God loves them. Um, and, and for those kids who aren't in those places, I would say, you know, know it even if you're not ready to, to tell others yet. Just know that God loves you and cares for you.